is Marnie and I am an independent midwife. I've been a midwife for 12 years. Uh, I've worked within the NHS for the majority of that time. I've worked with um, case loading teams um, in and outside of the NHS. So I have some experience of working um, as a uh, continuity of care provider. Hi, I'm Kirsty. I'm a midwife. I have been a continuity of care and midwife case loading in the UK for the last two years. And I've recently moved to Southern Ireland where I am continuing with a continuity of care and model. Hi, my name's Samantha Phyllis. I'm a community midwife at Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport. And I've been working within a continuity of care model since I qualified in 2018. When somebody has a continuity uh, of care, they are more likely to put their trust in that person and find them more approachable to talk to their concerns. We know that the things like breastfeeding rates are higher when there's a continuity of care. And from my personal experience, I know from working with a social midwife that the rates of um, interventions and assisted birth and cesarean sections are a lot lower when there has been continuity of care. So it does have a massive impact on the outcomes of women and their babies. There's a lot of evidence to show that continuity of care improves many outcomes. So there are um, less miscarriages at less than 24 weeks gestation, um, less preterm birth, women are less likely to have intervention if they've had continuity of carer, and most importantly, they're more likely to express that they've positivity of their experience of pregnancy. One of the key things um, for implementing continuity of carer is that information doesn't get lost or missed. You know, if somebody's constantly coming in, they're seeing a different person every time, and they see another person when they're giving birth. Um, it's quite easy for information to, to, to be lost. Yeah. I've got clients that I see at the moment and I've seen them from, you know, from six weeks of pregnancy right up um, to their birth and then, and, then, and then beyond afterwards as well. But I know about them and I know about their history and I know what, they're kind of, what, what they've been going through. So, yeah, so it's, re it's really important. And, and like I said, as a team, it's important that everybody knows what is going on with everybody within that within that um within that team that's being looked after by them continuity of care affecting patient safety so there are many factors which um, are critical to patient safety and continuity of care one of the main things is a multidisciplinary team working model once you've got the communication open between the obstetricians between the midwives between fetal medicine between the midwives that take bloods all those different aspects, then the continuity of care for patient safety is second to none. So this is an example of the importance of continuity of care from a clinical point of view. So some of the clinical things midwives do in antenatal appointments. So one of the things we have to do from 28 weeks is a, a symphysis fundal height measurement. And we know from evidence that if this is done by the same midwife on each appointment, you are more likely to get an accurate result. Um, midwives, even though we're trained in exactly the same way on how to do it, we all have slightly different ways of doing it, no matter how hard we try to meet a standard. So um, one particular woman who I had seen all the way through her pregnancy, so I'd started measuring her symphysis fundal height at 28 weeks. I measured it again at 31 weeks and it was all measuring fine. And then I measured again at 34 weeks and um, the, the graph that we follow had completely, like the, this line had gone off the graph. She was kind of measuring above the 99th centile and she had been measuring on the 50th. So I know as a midwife um, that this is a possible sign of polyhydramnios, um, which could be a symptom of gestational diabetes. So because I was really confident in my measurements and also visually she looked a lot larger and from examining her, her abdomen felt a lot tighter than it had done previously. I felt quite confident that this woman probably did have polyhydramnios. So because of that, um, I did actually carry out some blood tests 
um, just to rule out or rule in gestational diabetes. And I arranged a urgent ultrasound scan for her. So the ultrasound scan confirmed that she had polyhydramnios and the blood test results confirmed that she had gestational diabetes. So we were able to really quite quickly manage that clinical situation and therefore give her and her baby the best possible outcome. So um, in the role of continuity of care and midwife, I've seen women who've had previous very low birth weight babies for whatever reason, have um, healthy weight babies carrying to term. I've had women that have had quite severe mental health problems gain the support that they need from a trusting relationship with myself to be able to bring in the correct services for her. And also women from addiction services backgrounds who have needed extra added support. These women need trust to be built with their midwife to enable them to become the best mother that they can be. So I had been working with this woman and she did have a history of anxiety, but throughout her pregnancy, she had been okay, but she did attend an appointment at clinic and she just seemed, the only way I can describe it, she seemed reluctant to leave. Um, and so, we had a bit of a chat about it and I just was really honest with her and really congruent with her and said, I really get the sense that there's something you're not telling me, that there's something going on that you don't feel able to verbalise at the moment, but something's just not quite right. And she said, no, it isn't. And then disclosed her anxieties around birth um, that, that had been building up in her for weeks. She hadn't been sleeping. And so we had a bit of a conversation then but I was aware of the constraints of clinic um, and that the other women were waiting, as was she. And, she, you know, women are really thoughtful. And she's like, I know you've got a really full clinic and I don't want to take the clinic up. So what we decided from that appointment was that we would arrange for me to go and see her at home and, you know, have a good hour, hour and a half session um, appointment with her so that we could talk about some of those anxieties and not have the time constraints that I have in clinic. So that's what we did. And it didn't fix it. it. It certainly didn't fix the situation. But her knowing that I was going certainly helped her manage that that crisis that she was in at that time. And then by going again later and having um, longer with her meant that I was able to then put more support in place through the mental health midwives and through the wider mental health team that, you know, I'm not sure would have happened if she'd just seen a, a midwife she'd never met before that day. Um, and she is she she she's now had her baby and she's been coping really well in the postnatal period. So, you know, the the importance of recognizing any mental health issues in the antenatal period, it, it cannot be underestimated because that really improves outcomes postnatally as well. Poor narratives between health professionals and lack of um, understanding for how different models of care work. So uh, one of the main barriers to implementing continuity of carer is staffing. Um, so staffing levels and funding, because to properly implement continuity of carer, we have to have good staffing. And from my point of view, as a midwife who's out in the community, the 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 best bit of my job, the icing on the cake, is when I can attend a birth. Um, so that means if I'm out working in the community and I am called to attend a birth, whether that be a home birth or on the midwifery led unit, I have to be confident that there are enough staff around to be able to pick up my work that I'm not able to do because I'm at a birth. And so that is one of the main sticking points for implementing continuity of care. Um, the other problem is the perspective of the current um, workforce. So a lot of midwives who have, have worked in a certain model for so long really struggle to see outside of that. And it's not a criticism. I've been really lucky in that ever since I qualified, this is all I know. So this is my comfort zone. And, you know, it's great that I can work within my comfort zone. But for those midwives that are so used to maybe only being on call once or twice a month um, and knowing what their day is going to look like. So when they get up in the morning, they know that they're going to have five community visits and be going into clinic. And it, it can be very difficult for them to sort of change the way that they look at their 
work and look at their working day. Um, I mean, we do know from research that midwives actually have a much better work-life balance and have um, and enjoy work more when they work in a continuity of care model. But it's just, I suppose, getting past that barrier and convincing midwives that this that it is okay. Although it's scary and change is scary, it is okay. And it's, it's a great way of working. The main barrier to implementing continuity of care act is staffing and um, the fact that many members of the maternity team work part time hours. So they work every single day and they're not there on call constantly um, to be available for, for women should they have any concerns. So this is something that would need to be looked into to set up a, a, a continuity of, of, of care provision for, for women. So yeah, the main, the main thing is, is uh, staff and getting that right. Flexibility, flexibility with time, understanding of the, the model of care that we are providing for women and to ensure that there's this line of support from senior management. I think at first, perhaps they can look at a, um, a similar model of care from uh, another more successful uh, organisation that's already implemented it. And, and kind of go from there. Good management is absolutely paramount. Having a team that are all ready and are willing to um, put the time in and put, and put the effort in, into making sure that women you know, receive as much one-to-one -one care as possible. Having backup members of staff as well as paramount. paramount. Um, and working within a team, so perhaps if you've got a team, a team of 10 midwives, and they're all providing continuity of care to perhaps buddy those midwives up with each other so that rather than just having one midwife that sees one woman throughout, that she has um, a backup midwife as well so that if she is ever off sick or anything like that, the, the second midwife can step in and both those midwives will then see, um, see that client through the pregnancy and, and, and beyond. So for individual midwives wanting to implement it, I suggest talking to other midwives who do it and understanding the work-life balance that comes with it and how that affects you in your life. From a maternity services point of view, it's about communication, narratives, and doing work around understanding how teams work. I feel the important things are having open conversations with midwives about how it can work, what it can look like. Um, and for those midwives to take the leap and trust that the, the benefits they're going to get from looking after their women and families throughout the pregnancy continuum is completely balanced out by maybe being on call a bit more often um, and maybe their day changing throughout the day as they do get called to births. Um, it, it's just about trusting that it is a really, really good way of working. And you do feel like you're really giving women and their families absolutely gold standard care and that we do have more time with our families when we work in this model. Continuity of care um, definitely improves birth outcomes, better weight babies at delivery, women stopping smoking, um, women reducing their um, substance misuse and mental health. You're probably aware of the um, the um, the black maternal mortality crisis, and uh, you know, and the the rate that has been kind of going up over the years. You know, ten years ago, um, black women were three times more likely to die. Uh, now it's five times more likely. You're thinking, what what on earth is going on? Why is it picking up? And I think that continuity of would be huge, would, would, would play a huge part. Um, I've got quite a lot of followers on, on Instagram. A large portion of those followers are actually from the United States um, and uh, they're, they're Americans and um, a lot of them are black American women. Um, and often they, they, they message me, not realizing I'm from the UK. Um, 
asking if I will look after them, if I can, you know, what are my fees? How much will it cost them for me to look after them throughout their pregnancy? Because they're worried about dying. Um, they're hoping that if they get a midwife that's a, a, a different colour, but just one midwife that will look after them throughout their pregnancy and their birth and afterwards, that perhaps it will reduce their risk of, of dying in birth or, or in pregnancy. It's, I mean, it's shocking. It's really, it's really, really sad, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, what would be nice is to see perhaps continuity of carer um, schemes set up for people from marginalised backgrounds, you know, as a priority, those ones who um, the, the, the risk of adverse outcomes for them are higher. Those kind of people should, in my eyes, <laughs> should benefit from, from um, continuity of care. So finally, I just wanted to express my passion at working in the continuity of carer model um, for me as a relatively newly qualified midwife, having only been doing it two and a half years. It is all I know. And that relationship with women and their families cannot be overestimated. Um, so I just really wanted to let any midwives out there know who are nervous or apprehensive about working in this model that it really is worth it and you won't look back. It's the best way of working. Thank you.